Y'all, at this point, Allison needs to put up her coochie card at this point, y'all, because it's not working. It's not doing its job. It's not doing what it's meant to do. My name is Ashley, and this is My Sweet Perspective, where I give my take on all things TV and movie related, and I am here to put you on, okay? Without further ado, y'all, let's get right into this episode, House of the Dragon, Season 2, Episode 5, Regent, okay? And we're back from war. We all know what it was. Rest in peace, Rainies, the queen that never was, but that always should have been. You know what I'm saying? But we're back in King's Landing, and baby, they got Maylise's head on the swivel, Right. So Kristen Cole thinks he is just the smartest person in the universe, but continues to be the biggest idiot. All right. Sir Gwen is like, was this a victory? Because <laughs> Kristen's like, everybody's looking sad. Um, they don't realize we just won. And Gwen is like, what did we win, Crispy? What did we win? And the people are like, this is a bad omen. The dragons are supposed to be like gods. The Targaryens, you know what I'm saying? What does this mean for us? What does this mean for the realm? Where's the king? So they got questions, honey. Uh, Aegon is barely hanging on by a thread, all right? The armor has basically uh, melted onto his skin. And so the maesters are doing all they can, like ER doctors, trying to get Aegon free of the armor, assess the damage, and see what's going on. Meanwhile, Aemon is there with both daggers now, right? Because because we already know what time he was on. And Allison's like, what happened? And Eamon says, well, somebody got a rule. Somebody got a rule in his stead, okay? Uh, Kristen and Allison, um, they have a little discussion, and she's basically like, Sir Crispy, what happened? What did Eamon do? And he's cleaning his sword with the salt and lemon. He says, baby, I can't tell you that. I don't know. But, you know, we do need to figure something out immediately ASAP okay meanwhile Rhaenyra is with a small council and Sir Alfred just continues to be a misogynist sexist all of the things uh and telling her stuff that she already knows right we know the biggest dragon that they, they all have are, is slain all right we know that Rhaenys was the best most skilled dragon rider that y'all had and she's like what would you have me do and they said we need to attack King's Landing while Vagar is down all right, while well, he's out of commission because he's he's war torn at this point. Uh, and she's like, listen, I can't make these types of moves right now. We're going to have to figure something out at this point because this isn't this isn't doing it. And really, they don't trust her. And she says later on in the episode, they were talking at me, not to me like they know better because they're men. And we, we already know what time it is. Meanwhile, Jace is talking to Bela and he's like, listen, I have to go see Damon. I, w I need to do something. My mama won't let me go, Bela. It can't be all on your shoulders as the only dragon rider. Uh, and he sits and he thinks better of it. And he says, you know what? Let me go to the twins and go talk to the phrase. Okay. But don't tell my mama. Okay. Bela's like, all right. Uh, but again, I don't trust the phrase. It, it could be, you know, PTSD from Game of Thrones. Nevertheless, I don't trust them. But, you know, we'll get into it. So remember that last week, uh, Damon met with the Blackwoods and they said that for their fealty, he would have to administer the king's justice with his dragon to the Brackens. Well, Damon goes to see about the Brackens and they not bending a knee. And Damon likes it. You know, Damon likes an obstinate people. You know what I'm saying? And so after they leave, because they said, come with the fire, he sits and talks to the Blackwood and is like, uh, we got other means to convince them. Now, I didn't know what it meant in the moment, but, but Damon don't have any issue taking out innocence, pillaging, violating he, he has no issues. Nobody's innocent. Women, children, anybody could get it, right? So basically, he's sending in this moment the Blackwoods on a mission to make the Brackens bend the knee by any means necessary, okay? Meanwhile, Raina is at the airy in the Erie, right? Uh, and the the lady there, is it Sir Elaine? What was her name? Elaine? Whatever. I don't remember that lady's name. She was in here for like two seconds. But she said, we wanted bigger dragons, basically, OK, uh, and she said, well, the queen sent you, too. Is that not good enough? And she's like, listen, Raina, don't get outside yourself. You're a guest here at my, at my pleasure. OK, so if you get out of line, just know it could be up and it could be stuck. 
All right. And I'm like, well, and she's like, you know what? I just don't like to be out of control. I just don't like to be unprepared. And Raina says, neither do I. We already know Raina has ought against Rhaenyra for sending her out here anyway. I'm wondering where this is going to lead, what kind of alliance this is going to build up to. Y'all drop it in the comments below and let me know what you think. So now we are back at Dragonstone and Ray is talking to Masaria White Worm, right? And Ray is again saying, they just speak around me, you know? Uh, and listen, White Worm is like, they don't know everything. There is w more than one way to fight this war, okay? And how about you try delegating, which was an excellent piece of advice. And of course we see Rhaenyra looking for the closest thing to... Um, a supportive friend right now, right? Because her council is full of men. They care nothing about her. Um, they really don't think that she's fit to rule other than her namesake, right? They think a man, AKA Damon, should be in charge. So White Worm is like, listen, the people of King's Landing are freaking out at this point. There's no food. They're hungry. They saw the dragon. That's a bad omen to them. Um, and all they can think about right now is that under Viserys, we had peace. Rhaenyra, you're the closest thing to Viserys. Let us work for you. There's other ways to fight a war. Let others work for you. And I said, finally, let's delegate. Let's do some queenly-ish. You know what I mean? Other than you jumping to try to go to war all the time, Rhaenyra. Not going to happen. At least not yet. Okay? Like, you're supposed to be the queen. You're supposed to be the queen. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, ugh. back at Hall, Damon is losing it. Honey, he has this dream. And I said, who is this Targaryen woman? At first, I thought it was uh, Viserys' wife. But then I was like, no. And she's telling him, you know, how awesome he is and how amazing and how he should be the king. And I mean, they're all the way in the jungle. He's down there eating that kootenanny up like it's Sunday dinner. Okay, he's tearing it up. Um, and she's saying, you know, too bad you weren't born first. And I mean, that was his mama, y'all in a dream i the targaryens do too much for me all right um at least it, it seemed to be his mama y'all let me know in the comments below because I, I i was perplexed and later alice rivers which witchcraft and wizardry says the same thing too bad you ain't know your mama and he looked at her like she was cool for cocoa puffs but we know she know she know enough she knows enough. Okay. And so Sir Simon comes and wakes him up because, of course, that's what Sir Simon is going to do. All right. Uh, and he comes up with a plan with Sir Simon to fix up Heron Hall. Like, we need to pull the resources because I can't keep living in the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Basically, that's where it was. Back at King's Landing, Aegon is still asleep, and the Meister is not sure if he'll ever wake up. There's been extensive damage. Uh, and they don't even know if they've uncovered all the damage. So they go to the small council meeting and Allison says she's going to sign herself as regent. She served as regent before she can do it again. <laughs> they say, nah, bookie boo. Nah, nah, sis. Uh, we have a rightful heir in the room. Amen. He can rule. Well, we know how he can't control his temper. Well, sis, it doesn't matter. And Laris. <laughs> Larry Strong, who she thought was her ally, says, listen, you know, we can't put a woman on the throne here. We're trying to take a woman off the throne there. That don't make no sense. Eamon's got to do it. And finally, she gets around to Sir Crispy Cole, her lover, her man, her lead thing thing. You know what I'm saying? Her, her main, her main boy toy. The thing she likes to ride every chance she gets. And do you think that man sided with her? Do you think he was on her side? Do you think he cared? Do you think do you think all of that love making, all of that rodeo show did anything for him? No. Mm -mm. He said, Eamon got it. That's what we need. We need a dragon rider. <laughs> for the next five to ten minutes, Allison is sitting there crumbling. And I say, you need to retire that cootie cat, sis. It's not serving you. You need to put a chastity belt on it because it's not working. I ain't never seen it in my whole life. You throwing it out of every single draw leg you got, sister. Bending it over, spreading it wide, okay? All for Krispy Kreme to do you dirty in the small council. Not He couldn't even be on your side. They were going to get the votes they needed, you know what I'm saying, outside of him. But the fact that he wouldn't even stand 10 toes down for you, it speaks volumes, sis. So she's unraveling, uh, and it, it was a mess, y'all. It, it was a mess. Eamon immediately, honey, picks up his ball, goes to the head of the table, and starts telling the people what we're about to do. 
<laughs> we're about to do this, 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 this. And I'm saying at least Eamon wanted to be king. At least Eamon has prepared himself to be king. At least he got a plan. And I'm never a team green, but you know, I kind of always like Eamon. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe I need, I need to think of on that. And the most important thing he did on that, on that council at the head of the table was say, cut down those darn rat catchers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, we see the blacksmith and his wife, and she wants to leave town. She said, baby, let's go. He says, listen, the king promised to give us money. She's like, listen, unless you're trying to feed ghosts, we need to get out of town ASAP, immediately. Let us go. She said, the king probably gone. Let's be honest. There's no food. Uh, they got the dragon head. It's an omen, and he's trying to hold on to hope, I guess. But eventually, they get up and try to get out of town, but the knights got the gate locked off. They can't go nowhere. Nobody can. They locked in the city. All right. Uh, and so Allison bumps into Sir Crispy in the courtyard. And she says, is your loyalty only good at night, Sir Crispy? And my thing is, his loyalty ain't even really good at night, girl. <laughs> of all the people you could have chosen to open it up to and spread it wide. And we know this was before Viserys died. We, we know, girl, you've been screwing this man. And, and the fact that he has no allegiance... Ciao. I bet you if Rhaenyra kept giving it to him, he'd never do Rhaenyra like that. But anyway, I'm going to move on. Uh, and he says, I saw what I saw. I've never seen anything like it. Okay, and we need a dragon rider to lead us. And she said, I ain't give you permission to say my name. Don't even speak my name at this point. And I said, well, you're too little, too late, girl. That don't, he don't, that don't mean nothing to him. And my thing with Sir Krispy Kreme is now all of a sudden war is terrible. All of a sudden now that dragons are involved, um, you know, their acts are just so horrendous. It, it, it's like the hypocrisy is at an all-time high. It's like it's on sale. You know what I mean? His unmitigated gall uh, is on sale because the way that he has brutalized people and he's worried about the dragons. And I get it. The dragons are on a much larger scale. But Crispy, you're just a diabolical hell sent type of person. You know what I mean? And, and the outrage is, you know, he likes Eamon being on the crown because they can unleash all manner of atrocities and violence. You know what I mean? That, that, that's what he wants secretly. I know it is. Uh, the people are outraged, desperate, and starving. It, the small folk are. And I'm interested to see how this is going to turn. Meanwhile, Jace has gone to see the phrase. And they want Heron Hall, okay? And they want protection. Um, and so he offers them protection, uh, but he says, or not protect, well, protection, and they want passing. Basically, his idea is that if they can transport soldiers through the twins, right, that the frays are over, that they'll be, you know, that'll be great for the blacks. Um, and so they say, okay, well, if you if you give us your protection, and they said, but we want something else. We want Heron Hall at the end of all this. And he says, well, for Heron Hall, baby, you're going to have to bend a knee. That's complete fealty. All right. Uh, and so he makes the deal. And of course, you know, now he's going to have to go back and tell Rhaenyra this, even though she doesn't know he went or he doesn't think she knows that he went. Meanwhile, Damon is back at Heron Hall and Alice Witchcraft and Wizardry Rivers uh, tells him of the atrocities against the innocents. Well, because first he's working in the field and he starts hearing all these screams and she's making him hear it. It's the people. It's it's the Brackens that he sent the Blackwoods to do all this damage to, right? And she's not having it. She's like, do you really want an army of people that are under duress? And she tries to give him some warnings or whatever, but she's already disgusted by him. She is probably going to be his demise. You know what I'm saying? They haven't got Bucky naked yet to my knowledge but when that happens it's over for damon you, you can't you can't mess with the witchcraft and wizardry you just can't do it um and so he basically says that his plan to alice is you know i'm doing this for me i was supposed to be king i was supposed to be this but if my wife want to come <laughs> we can rule together because they'll never serve her they will never uh have obeisance towards her it'll never be that right is what his is what he's saying to her and she's like, hmm, interesting. And I'm like, Alice ain't too crazy. Now, honey, Corliss. Corliss is down bad. He missing his wife. He think rethinking all his life decisions when he was out there dipping it low, having multiple babies by other women. You know, he, he's he's ruminating on all those things. And he got a nerve to have a little bit of bitterness at Rhaenyra. Bela comes and she's like, listen, Rhaenyra wants to ask you to be her hand. 
And he's like, what? My wife's death wasn't enough for her? And come on now, Corliss, you saw your wifey volunteer. You know that she was down for the cause. Don't do not do that. Uh, and so he appeals and he says, you know, I would rather just drift on the seas aimlessly at this point because he's so depressed, you know. And then he says to her, you know what? I want to make you my heir. She says, baby, I'm a blood and fire. Drift Mark got to go to salt and sea. Again, go get your sons. Go get Alan, Okay. And again, let's get some dragon riders. Sir Alfred um, is ordered by Rhaenyra to go to Heron Hall, and he's like, are you getting rid of me? And she's like, no, I just, I'd rather, instead of sending a bird that Damon's not going to respond to, that'll ignore, I want to send you, and I want you to gauge where he's at, find out his intentions. And he's like, intentions? She's like, yeah, if he intends to rule himself, or is this for me, right? And I'm thinking, finally, girl, you delegating. Finally, send, get these people something to do. Get these men folk something to do so you can plan and strategize, right? Damon uh, is in bed, tired, honey. Just, 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 just in Heron Hall. It's rainy. It's wet. It looks like such a terrible, uncomfortable, uh, just broken down place you know what I mean to be in but he's asleep and of course Sir Simon because Sir Simon is the wake-up call and he's like what Sir Simon the pudding's ready and he's like no you got to go see what's going on okay uh and he's like you know uh the the Blackwoods got the Brackens to bend the knee he's like yeah that's old news and he's like maybe not so he goes in there and sees the people and they're like, listen, they were flying your banners, doing all manners of evil against our people. And ain't no way we are going to bow the knee, bend the knee to an interloper. And I was like, y'all need to exit stage left quickly because Damon might have chopped y'all up. I, I saw it coming. I did. I did. And so as he's standing there talking to the people, uh, he's seeing Lena. And she's like, war is going on all around. The world is falling down. Have you checked on your girls? Baby, he ain't seen about them kids. He don't even talk to them kids. Them kids are not his concern. Next thing we see is Alinda. Okay, White Worm has sent Rhaenyra's handmaid Alinda to King's Landing to do her bidding. She's talking to the connects, honey, getting information. And we're going to see next episode to what end. You know what I mean? What tea is she really getting? Corliss, we kind of see... Um, he grabs the pen of the hand and holds it tightly, which I'm hoping means he will be the hand. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, Eamon, Eamon and Helena, and she sees Eamon looking at the, looking at the throne, all the swords and all that, the iron throne. And she says, was it worth it? <laughs> Cause baby Helena knows, was it worth the price? Did you count up the cost, Eamon? Mm foreboding foreboding Aegon and Allison you know she's there holding his hand too little too late though Allison too little too late too late too little too soon all of the above because you could tell he might have been you know stirring a bit but she gets up gets up and walks out just as he's saying mommy I, she just ain't no kind of what mama would leave the, even Catelyn who I cannot stand from Game of Thrones stayed by Bran's side as long as she could at least a fortnight she didn't go nowhere. She was with her baby. Do you hear me? Who was trying to take her out in the wolf defended? Y'all know what I'm saying. Anyway, finally, Rhaenyra and Jace uh, get together. And he talks about the phrase and the deal and all of that stuff. And she's like, well, I knew where you went. You know what I mean? But I'm mad because you didn't tell me. And you're the heir. And I feel the same way. My hands are tight as well. And he's like, we got some of the biggest dragons right beneath us. She's like, but they don't have dragon riders. And he says, listen, there's a lot of Targaryens that have married off into other families. We just need to go to the histories and find it out. Best idea of the episode. Good on you, Jace. Let's find some people to ride these big old dragons that we got. Then we will be in business. You guys, these are my initial thoughts. <laughs> recap and review of house of the dragon episode five regent y'all this was a good episode for me this is probably one of the most the most enjoyable episodes i know it was the aftermath of rainies that kind of have us reeling and it wasn't super action-packed but i feel like some good strategic moves were made this episode especially for team black and y'all know i'm team black all day but if you enjoyed this recap review please let me know in the comments below be sure to like comment just subscribe do all the things and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.